and welcome to the super fun awesome happy time pedal and once again plug-in show my name is Gabor and today I'm looking at this now this is the crystalline reverb by the good folks at baby audio uh, just want to mention right from the start this was sent to me by baby audio so this is a sponsored video you can also watch a video I did with the super VHS which is a really cool plug-in up here it's like a lo-fi kind of sort of plug-in uh, yeah and I thought I'd check this out on guitar today um, and invite you guys along. So the crystalline is a reverb. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at the layout. So when you first open it up, it looks like this. Or actually, it looks like this. Uh, first thing I got to say, which is awesome, totally resizable to whatever size you want it to be, which is great. I love that. I think it's silly to have all these tiny little windows. Fully resizable, which is awesome. Uh, you can also change the color from white to black. I personally prefer the black. Uh, I'm just going to keep it on the black. Uh, you've got up here the presets, a uh, whole bunch of presets by a whole bunch of people who, in all honesty, I have no idea who all these people are. Uh, I'm guessing Skylar is an engineer and I'm guessing Steve Dickey is a rock star. But other than that, I have no idea who these people are, but these are a bunch of presets and you can put your own user, user presets in there as well. Uh, you have this button to save presets, this button to load a preset if you have presets stored somewhere else. Uh, you have the help button. So if you click on that, as you move your mouse over this down the bottom here, it shows you, it kind of tells you what it is. You have an eco mode. Now what eco mode does is it kind of puts it into a, the lowest sort of possible CPU usage thing. So if you have a big mix with lots of reverbs in it and you want to do some recording and just want some reverb as a reference as you're recording something, you can put it on eco mode so it doesn't use as much uh, processing power. Um, it, it's off now, yes, good. Uh, you can set whatever you have things set on as a default. So whenever you start the reverb, um, it comes on as that and you can set it do the reset thing where it goes back to its default setting which you can make something else a default if you want it to be a default so for example i could make this the default so now if i press reset it won't go anywhere because this is now the new default um, okay and then basically you have these four sections here right you've got reflections cleaner go mouse get big where's the mouse why is the mouse not getting big well, okay, clean up, reflections, depth, and shape. Now the mouse is getting big. Shape, depth, reflections, and clean up. And then you've got this cool little window in here which shows you, it's just a graphic sort of thing. Uh, and then you've got this middle bit. Let, let's just start off with reflections. So you've got your size. Basically, your size is the size of the room. It's all very, you know, visual, I find. You know, you've got a small room, or tiny room as they call it, I think. Uh, or you've got a spacey, spacey room, large room, medium room, spacey room. If you double click, it always goes back to the default. Uh, sparkle is the high frequency content of uh, the reverb. So you, if you wanted to sparkle more, a bit more high frequency, you turn it up. So it emphasizes the high frequencies more. Again, double click goes back to the default. Width goes from neutral to a very wide stereo width to a very focused, it's very visual, I find, the baby audio stuff. That's one thing I really like about it. It's quite simple in user face and very visual. Uh, so that's a very mono, very small stereo width. Uh, yeah, and so on. Uh, cleanup, uh, you've got damping. You've got on the left, if you move your mouse on the left part of it, it says it up the top, HPF, high pass filter. On the right, it's a low pass filter. So you can set at what part you want uh, it to roll of high frequencies, low frequencies. Sides. Now, sides is a quirky one. Oh, an interesting one. Actually, really cool um, kind of thing. Now, one of the problems often you have with, with reverb in mixes, especially if you use a lot of reverbs, is that it can get kind of muddy and cluttered, um, especially if you use a big sort of stereo, uh, ambient, lush stereo reverb. What sides does is it actually, you can at and it, you sort of select the, where the frequencies are. Um, you can... From those frequencies, it so all the high frequencies are beautiful, lush and stereo, and then as of 160 hertz, it becomes mono, uh, which means in the lower frequencies, you're losing a lot of that big 
reverb content, it's still kind of there, but you're kind of losing the big stereo spread, which cleans up mixes less muddy, which is actually quite a smart control, I think. Uh, you've got a gate, again, on the left. It's sort of these, you know, Pac-Man-looking things. You've got a threshold uh, where you can set it to how many decibels or off at the top and uh, release time, how quick or how fast you want it to release. Uh, let's look at the depth control. Uh, depth, you've got resolution. So re resolution means you've got a super pristine, super clean reverb, which in turn will also use the most CPU. Uh, very CPU intensive. You can go to high, you can go to basic, which gives you a few sort of artifacts as well, which may be what you want, may not be what you want, but it's there. Uh, modulation. Uh, again, it shows you very much sort of, it's very visual, right? It adds modulation to the reverb, whether you have this kind of stuttery kind of one or a more, you know, sine wavy kind of spiky looking thing. Uh, you can select what you want. It's quite cool sounding modulation, actually. Now, shimmer is not actually shimmer as you would think as a guitar player, what shimmer would be, which is sort of a, a, a higher octave kind of thing. Shimmer, basically, all it means is you have, the, you have the on and off switch down the bottom, and then you have the three buttons down the bottom, and with that, you select a frequency range again. So two kilohertz, four kilohertz, or eight kilohertz. And then you can say, I want all the reverb content at four kilohertz to be emphasized as in two times as much, four times as much, or six times as much. It, it basically gives you more reverb, longer reverb tails at those frequency ranges. Um, and then lastly, you have shape. Now, tone is quite simple. Do you want it to be a da a darker? So you turn up the lower frequencies, higher frequencies down. Do you want it to be kind of neutral in the middle or do you want it to be a brighter so you get rid of more dark low frequencies um shape again is something um oh sorry soothing is something again where um i think they picked specific frequencies that are frequencies that are problem frequencies in mixes uh, and you can soothe out these frequencies a lot of them are lower frequencies so basically you can kind of get rid of up up at full, you don't do anything. As you get rid of it, you kind of soothe out these frequencies to make the mix a bit uh, less muddy. And then lastly, you've got transients, which is kind of a cool thing as well. So if you go to the left, it emphasizes the attack. If you go to the right, it emphasizes the sustain. Now, what that means is if you hit something, like you hit, you strum a chord on a guitar, um, the initial transient, the very first hit, do you want that? to be emphasized in the reverb or do you want not the very first bit you want that to be kind of left alone and you want the next parts of your transient this more sustained part of your transients to be emphasized in the reverb i'll show you in an example later on it's quite a smart there's a couple of really smart controls there uh, and then last you've got the middle uh, you'll see this later on this is a screen where um it you can kind of see these sort of things there already sort of these waveforms that uh, just a kind of visual thing uh, and then you've got start and end time and you can either sync it or millisecond it. Now sync, it syncs to the BPM of your, I guess, of your DAW. Milliseconds, it gives you milliseconds. Start is your pre-delay, basically, which you can go from zero up to one second. Um, and then you have your end, which is your decay, which also goes from zero to 10 seconds. Now that works in conjunction with the size. So you've, you can have a big room with long decay, you can have a small room with long decay. You can have a big room with short decay. It gives you different types of reverbs. Uh, uh, and then a very last thing is you have a ducker. Now, ducking, people may have heard the term before. Ducking just means as you're playing, um, the reverb kind of gets ducked away, kind of the volume drops away from it. Um, uh, if you have it off, uh, it doesn't. So the reverb stays at the same level. If you turn it on, you can kind of make it gradually duck the reverb away. You have two settings as well. You have gentle on and off. Gentle just means it's a kind of a gentle ducking. If you turn gentle off, it's a more harsh ducking. So you can really kind of hear it as you're playing. Uh, you have your dry wet mix. Uh, you have a button down here called wet lock. Wet lock means if you have a bunch of different presets and you have different dry wet mixes set to different presets, if you set it to wet lock, it will lock it to whatever you've got it set on at the time and you go through different presets and it keeps that wet dry mix. Uh, and then you have two buttons in the middle. One is rev, which is a reverse reverb. And the other one is freeze, which you can, as you play something, push it and it freezes stuff. Uh, 
lots of talking to get through it. Now, let's make some noise. So, my setup for today for this is, I have this Sire Larry Carlton um, S7 FM, uh, which goes via a Strobe Peterson Strobe Chomp Stomp HD guitar tuner uh, into the Mastronics M switcher, Andrew, uh, which that has the Engel um, Ironball um, SE. Yes, it is the Ironball SE. I just double checked because my brain is not working. It's got Ironball SE selected. That then goes back to the Two Notes Torpedo um, Live, which has some Celestion Plus IR selected. I'll put up a picture of it now and there's links an affiliate link below if you want to um, check out those eyes you don't have to buy the IRs I'm using um, if you click on the link and buy any IRs that helps out the show uh, and then from there so from the two notes that's basically my, my speaker emulation it goes straight into my Audient ID44 interface uh, and then straight into Logic and uh, just the guitar into the amp without the reverb sounds like this <laughs> I've got it slightly overdriven if you go to the neck pickup. It's clean humbucker, it's a, it has a bit of grit. A lot of people don't call it clean, I call it clean. But that's clean anyway on a single coil. Okay, so this is now the default setting. So when you first turn it on, this is what it sounds like. And if I turn it on, this is what it sounds like. So you can see that graphic there in the middle. It's just sort of like a, it's kind of cool. It's a graphical representation. Is it needed? No, but it's there and it looks cool. <laughs> I guess it shows you also visually whether you have a lot of low frequency content or not. You can get rid of. Anyway, let's try out, just to start off with, let's try out a couple of presets and then I'll kind of noodle around with a few things. So if you look at the presets, uh, let's start up the top. Let's just look at, for example, basic plate. I love plate reverbs. Um, now see that, for example, now the dry wet mix went all the way up to 100, so it's all wet. But we can bring in some dry. It's a nice sounding reverb. So. Uh, let's quickly check this out so you can do pre-delay. Up to one second, I mean, which is... If that's what you want to do. Uh, you also now, so we're at the medium size room. Let's get off sync. Uh, you can go from a really short reverb like a room sound, which sounds really nice actually. To 10 seconds of reverb. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can also then reverse that if you really want. freeze it and so on and so on. Uh, I'll just quickly show you the ducking thing. So if I'm now playing, so let's turn the, the wet up a bit more just so you can hear it a bit better. Now if I move that up, as I'm playing it kind of, it's, it's almost an envelope there that kind of ducks the volume out. Now if you turn gentle off, it's a much more extreme. So you can really hear it. So that's what ducking does. Uh, I'm just going to keep that off, keep the wet dry. You know what? I'm going to put it to 50% and lock it. So different presets, it just stays on that. Uh, so let's go to the biggest plate. I love plates and let's make it a big reverb. Lots of stereo content. And 
yes, that was the wrong node. Uh, <laughs> and let's do this. So for example, let's look at that. Let's look at the transients thing. So if I go to the left, this now emphasizes the original transient. So the first hit is sort of emphasized in a reverb. If I go to the other side, it sort of delays when the when the emphasis of the reverb. So it's sort of it's almost like a pre-delay, but not really. But see if you go to that, it kind of leaves without selecting any pre-delay. It leaves the initial transient alone, so you can hear that initial attack, attack much better. With the really long reverb and tons of reverb that you can hear the initial attack. If you go this way, it gets more uh, uh, muddy because you can the initial attack is being reverberated. So it kind of gets in the way, which is I think it's quite a smart thing. So especially on a guitar, it's not a bad thing to just instead of using pre-delay, is to do that. That was the right note. Uh, so that's that. And then uh, with this again, so you can make it tone, you can make it brighter, darker. I mean, that's a lovely delay, a lovely reverb, and then a bit of modulation. Actually, that's beautiful. Let's give it a bit more sparkle, maybe. That's lovely. Uh, let's have a listen if we can hear. So if we've got a pristine now, right? So I'll play the same thing. There's definitely a difference there. That is very pristine and that has, I mean, you may want to go for the pristine and you may want to go for the more lo-fi-ish sounding one. I wouldn't call it lo-fi, but I'd call it less pristine. <laughs> That's pretty much what I'd call it. Um, it's just lovely, it's just lovely. Uh, and I mean, you can have a gate if you really want to. Let's make the release time quicker. That's actually, you can make it kind of cool. You can kind of set it so it kind of just cuts off the reverb. So, I mean, if you want to do that, uh, I don't particularly want to do that. Uh, so with this as well, so you can select where you want. Let's, let's check this out. Let's go right up high. It, it's definitely become narrow, a narrow field. If I do this. Let's look at this. So if we turn this 
on, uh, let's say we want four kilohertz and we want that six times. So let's set it off, right? Now if we turn it on, maybe I need to. You can hear, so for example, let's go to the eight kilohertz and make that six times. You can hear the really high frequencies are staying there for much longer. So it emphasizes the high frequencies and, and makes them go for longer. Um, that's that. I mean, that's that's looking. That's pretty much all the control. Oh, and damping. I mean, you can. It's just a high pass filter and low pass filter, so you can make it. Throughout soothing, so smoothing. There's a lot more bulk there. It just kind of thins it out. In all honesty, I like it a bit darker with that modulation. That's lovely. That's a beautiful um, sounding plate reverb. Reverse it. Great. Uh, I said before, let's look at some presets first and then I'll muck around with it, but I just started mucking around with it. Let's quickly look at some presets if there's any more guitar related ones. Uh, I mean, we've got Basic Room. See, it leaves that now where it is because I guess if you turn it off and you go to Basic Room, yeah, it's full wet. So let's put that. There you go, 50%. That. Uh, let's see, is there, are there any guitar ones? Vox, 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 cha Chamber. Again, I like the transient thing. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, any guitar ones? Oh, here we go, ambient shimmer. Actually, what is that meant to be? Oh, it's full wet, yeah, so let's move it down a bit. That's lovely, actually. Um, big pop space. Oh, again, it's there. Let's put it down about there. Neo soul verb. I don't know any neo soul.
Guitar Room One. So to me, this kind of stuff is great when you're recording. I mean, this has got guitar uh, room sounds built into there, but I mean, this is extra room. Just creates life. Uh, mega hall. Omega 2. Just always makes me want to play that kind of surf kind of stuff that I'm not very good at, but um Oh that's cool. Guitar stuff, drums, diffuse, drums, drums, drums. I mean, it's a uh, duct cloud verb. All right, so that was a quick look at, oh, well, quick <laughs> look at the Baby Audio Crystalline. Big thank you to Baby Audio for sending it out to me. Uh, there will be more videos with Baby Audio stuff. We've been a little bit slack with doing videos uh, with the plugins because they're really, really cool plugins. Um, there'll be more coming very soon. Uh, if there's any particular ones you want us to do, let me know in the description below. Um, but yeah, that's all coming up soon. And please, while you're doing things in descriptions below, why not click on subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, uh, go check out our uh, Facebook. You are on YouTube. Go check out our Facebook, Instagram, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we do a podcast as well. Uh, make sure to go check it all out. Please do subscribe. Uh, about 90%, close to 90% of all our viewers are not subscribed. So uh, this always helps. So big thank you once again to Baby Audio for sending us out to us or sending us a link uh, to download. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.